In a science, technology and engineering play world, infants wander, imagine and explore, and educators create conditions for their learning. Based on research, this video is an example of an evidence-based model of play pedagogy designed to promote the exploration and learning of our youngest scientists, engineers and technologists. We can help you design your own STEM play world. When teachers design imaginary play situations, they support children's sense of wonder and exploration. Perfect for our future engineers, scientists and technologists. We know from research that imagination and play is critical for the learning of STEM concepts. But how do we set up a STEM play world for infants and toddlers at your centre? Let's look at how the educators at Windermere Early Learning Centre set up their conceptual play world for young infants, toddlers and the under threes. The educators collectively chose the story of Possum in the House by Kirsten Jensen. We wanted to read a book throughout the whole centre. So we really wanted a story that was multi-age and we could use all the way from infants all the way up to our kinder children. We also chose Possum in the House because where we're located, we do actually have quite a lot of possums around the centre. And so it's something that the children are already used to and engage in. So we wanted to draw on that as well. And because of the fact that all of our rooms are actually named after Australian native possums. In the story, children experience the drama of the naughty possum going all over the house. This story was the starting point to turn the whole childcare centre into a possum adventure. The big problem was, how do we get the possum out of the house? To answer this, there were all sorts of things to find out about possums. What sounds do they make? What do they eat? How do they eat? Where should they live? How do you catch a possum? What's the best way to relocate them with kindness? Lots of sensory materials can be included. And it's a chance to focus on the STEM concept of sound. With the sensory materials with the baby and we think it's more like Mm, helping the baby to understand that the different textures might, maybe, might make different sound and then which relate to the signs and like which, which hard, solid, soft, like different textures, different sound coming out from different textures and how the sound maybe transmit during the processing and then they can like it's more attracting to the baby with the sound so they can go listening to the sun and go through and then seeking and investigating which object is actually making that sound. So to promote them a little bit about um, thinking, hopefully in the future that, that they want to be more investigating and more keep going on. How do I make the sun or how can I make people hurt the sun to spread further? There are five things to think about when planning and implementing a STEM play world for infants and toddlers. The first step is selecting an engaging story. Crunch, crunch went the cornflakes. Screech, screech went the possum as he ran into the... The next step is to design the environment for the STEM play world. So we went on our little possum hunt. Um, interestingly, I found it really beneficial having the signs up there to say we're going on our possum hunt and we're leaving the possum hunt and that really helped with that significance of the play world we're entering because it, it provided the opportunity to stop for the conversation beforehand and go, oh, what's the sign say? Oh, we're going on our possum hunt. Okay, we need to go in there now, we need to go on our possum hunt. And oh, it's time to leave. We're saying leaving the possum hunt. So that really helped with that significance of actually getting the children to go, oh, okay, we have to go now. We have to leave our possum hunt. The third step is to plan how everyone will enter and exit the STEM play world. The children and teachers decide what character they will be and everybody enters the STEM play world together. Be 
be in a part of the character as well because your infants trust you and they will be more than likely or willing to entering the play world with an educator they love and trust and then they enjoy the whole story and then learn from that the story and um, the play world that you create or maybe create them together. Everyone exits the STEM play world together. It's time to go back into the centre. The fourth step is to plan the problem that will arise at the beginning or during the STEM play world. Having the play world gives them that sort of defined investigative topic. So it gives them what the purpose is behind, why they're going in, why they're looking for something. It gives them that real idea and that drive to investigate. And I think it sort of, it focuses their learning onto a set topic. Where should it be? How do we get the possum out of the house? New problems can arise, such as introducing a baby possum. Because children are naturally inquisitive, but they not necessarily have the time in their everyday to extend on that investigation. They might be going for a walk with mum or dad or grandma or grandpa and going, look, there's a possum, but where's the extra um, like teaching and learning when we've given, with, with the play world, it's an opportunity to have that time, give the children the time to ponder and research and look and ask those questions that they want to know. You were able to come up with the idea of we find mummy possum and then daddy possum and the problem is that baby possums lost and we need to go find baby possum so that she can go to bed. The children learn the concepts so they can solve the problem such as how do we help find baby possum? The problem is what motivates the children to learn. When new imaginary situations are introduced by the educators, the problem is deepened. So they just correlate, oh we don't have tails. So this is a differentiation, different thing for them. So they compare their bodies and our bodies. It's not on, okay, how, like internal bodies they can't because this is not an age. But yes, the basic parts of our body. We can point to everyday rooms such as the bathroom, the kitchen, and we even had that backed up with a book that was given to us with pictures of our own kitchen and our own bathroom. So it really put into context a visual of what those rooms are, what they're for, and then in the bigger picture, how it correlates to the book. So there's familiar scenarios that play out that would be very central to their little worlds, their parents and their home environment. So I think it's positive in that way. The, it takes away the distraction of everything else going on. Mm. Like very often they might go outside and they'll go, oh, a possum's been here. And then it's like, oh, okay, I wanna go on the swing now. And their sort of attention just goes straight onto something else. Yeah. Whereas you make it in that defined space and their attention stays on that concept and that topic for a lot longer. Finally, plan the interactions you have with the infants and each other. I think our, our planning for taking on roles in our conceptual play world was um, pretty much just to have one person leading the children as what the children were. So not being above, not being below, just being with the children, um, engaging in, in their learning and learning with them. Um, and then like, the other educator involved in the, in the play world would be there to support, uh, still be on that same level, learn with the children. Second educator is actually helping them and supporting them. Okay, this will be our next phase and what we're gonna do. So being a role model of that, then educator is doing the same and then it's, it's easy for children to follow that too that the leading, the one educator is leading, but the second educator is actually supporting and helping them to taking them to the next level, what we're gonna do, and this is gonna happen, and then they follow it. The educators found that the impact of the conceptual play world was immediate for the toddlers and under three-year-olds. 
Play Worlds gives educators the tools they need for supporting the intentional teaching of STEM concepts. I think for me that um, it's very important to keep trying and trust yourself. Trust your children that they, they're learning from a young age and just enjoying the world that you create together and then be the characters in the book and then having fun. I think the most important thing is for me is when, when I heard the project is like we are having we are gonna have so much fun when we are learning a very deep, maybe very deep and theoretical things, but with the younger children as well, which is very exciting. And I think because they're learning through play, it's sort of driving that interest. I know the brush tail children, they came out and they were sort of exploring out in the community space. And it was really interesting that night then when a lot of the children were going home. They'll go, oh, mum, dad, come on, we've got to go find the possum. And they were taking them back out there and they're having to hunt around looking for the possum again. And almost every child in that room did that in the afternoon when they went home. They were grabbing mum and dad, they were taking them out to investigate. And it's, yeah, it's really good to see. This video is an example of an evidence-based approach to play pedagogy, designed to support and promote our youngest engineers, scientists and technologists. 